What's up, y'all? Today, we talking about six ways to deal with a narcissist as a Christian. And now, I'm not encouraging anyone to stay in a relationship with a narcissist, right? But this video is to help you navigate when it comes to a narcissist, when it comes to being around a narcissist, okay? Because we have relationships with people who may be a narcissist, like our mothers, our fathers, our aunts, our uncles, our cousins, our brothers, our sisters, our child's parent, someone that cannot be removed out of our lives, someone that we got to cross paths with, someone that will communicate with us, and even someone that we might be married to, right? So these are six ways to deal with a narcissist as a Christian. So the first way to deal with a narcissist as a Christian is going to be to pray before you have to speak to them, before you speak to them, before you even have to go around them, if you absolutely have to go around them, right? If you can't even get around not being around them, you need to pray first. You need to talk to God. You need to ask God to help you when you go around them. Why do you need to do that? Because a lot of time with someone who is narcissistic, they do things underhandingly, right? They're passive aggressive, right? They do subtle things that's hard for us to understand. They try to confuse us. It could be the smallest thing. So how are you going to be aware of that? You need to be aware of that. And you also need help, right? So you need to pray to God to help you speak if you absolutely have to speak, to help you with your interaction with that person. Also ask God to help you see their schemes. Ask God for discernment. Ask God for knowledge. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God to help you when it comes to speaking to that person, right? Because God is going to help you to form what to say and how to say it. And he'll actually also help you to move in love. And I know a lot of people want to be like, love? How do you love a narcissist? Well, as Christians, like I said, this video is for Christians. It's six ways to deal with a narcissist as a Christian, which means we got to follow God, follow Jesus. What would Jesus do? Jesus wants us to love those who persecute us, though wants us to love those who treat us wrong. So again, this is if you absolutely have got to speak to that person, you absolutely got to go around them, ain't no way around it, then you need God with you. We need God to love those who are unlovable. We need God to help us love those who are hard to love. And we need God to help us see things that's hard for us to see so that we don't be getting caught up in their traps because they will try us. And we need God to help us if somebody try us so that we don't act the way, so that we don't say the wrong thing, all right? So pray before you even have to speak to that person. Pray before you even go around them, right? Even if you're in the car, just say a little prayer, right? Even if you forget and then you get around them, right? And then you might do something. Then automatically, if you remember, pray again. Pray, pray immediately, right? Pray immediately and ask God, God, help me, man. Lord, help me, right? And I'm going to help y'all see how this actually worked with me. I remember one time I was on the phone with a person that is narcissistic to me, right? And we had a little argument about something that we had to speak about, right? And because I knew how they were, I knew how they were at this time, right? I remember praying before I called them because I already knew how this person was going to be. I prayed before I called them. I told them what was up. I said it in a specific way because I know how they are and I know how words affect them, right? So I said it in a specific way because I know this person is sensitive to words and we know that narcissists want control. They want to control the whole situation. This is why they try to use us, right? So I already knew what was possibly going to happen before it even happened. So I prayed. I got on the phone with them, right? The person responded away and it almost caused me to react. But guess what happened? The phone hung up immediately. When that person did that and I felt myself about to respond away, the phone hung up and I was like, oh snap, they hung up on me. But then I realized even if they did hang up on me, even if they did hang up on me, it ain't matter. They didn't hang up on me though, but the phone hung up, right? So when the phone hung up and I felt how I was feeling, right? I immediately said, Lord, thank you, man. So I immediately thought about again, how I was going to call back and, and speak. So now I was able to be able to do it the correct way. I was able to move. I was able to speak a specific way and pay attention to how they were being 
before I got off the phone. God hung that phone up. My prayer helped, right? Because that person was being away and the phone hung up, boom, because God knew how I was about to react. But he checked me when that phone hung up and then I was able to do what I needed to do after I called them back. That's what happens when we pray. God will make a way out of no way. That's a fact, all right? So make sure you pray. You gotta pray. You need to pray before speaking to someone who is narcissistic because that's like speaking to the devil. That's like speaking to the enemy and you don't wanna be, you don't want them to be using what you're saying against you, all right? That's number one, pray before speaking. Number two is gonna be ignore them when they say something slick to you, when they try to take a subtle jab at you, when they bring up your past and try to use something to get you, right? When they say something sarcastic to you, when they're trying to make fun of you, when they're doing something towards you, ignore them, ignore them because they want a reaction out of you. Remember, they're trying to use you as a supply. Narcissist or someone who is narcissistic has an issue with communicating, right? They want to feel loved and they want, they want to use you as a pawn for how they feel and to make themselves feel better without communicating like a normal human being would, right? You got to remember, they're extremely insecure about themselves. It's hard for them to look at themselves. They're extremely sensitive. If they communicate to you and then you say something about what they need or what you need from them, blah, 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 that communicates to them that something is wrong with them, which makes them feel bad about themselves, right? So you got to understand how they are. They use things and say things to trigger you, to trigger us, to get a reaction out of us, right? It could be the smallest thing. It could be something they did towards someone else. It could be something that they did or said to you. It could be something that seems sarcastic and trying to be funny, but the real thing that they're doing is trying to get under your skin. They are trying to bother you. You understand? Because you being bothered, you being reactive, right? Validates that, that they are important, right? Them hurting you makes them feel like they mean something. It's, it's weird, right? It's crazy. It's crazy as I don't know what that that for me to pluck for me to hit you and you feel pain and get mad at me makes me feel good. That's just evil in my eyes, right? That's that's crazy evil. But that's how they are. And trust, I've been through this. It's real, man. It is real. So you got to pay attention and this can be your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your friend, your girlfriend, your boyfriend your husband or your wife. So you got to be careful. You need to ask God for discernment. But when this person says things, when they do things, ignore them because if they bother you, you got to remember why you have to ignore them, right? You got to understand why you have to ignore them because if it does bother you and then you tell them, well, you know, this bothered me or why did you do that? And what's, they're going to be like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I didn't do anything. You're sensitive. That's you. They immediately deflect, right? And they want the deflection. They want all of this back and forth to consistently bother you because your reaction to it validates them. Your reaction to it tells them that they're important, tells them that they mean a lot, tells them that they are this inflated person, right? That just matters. Everything matters to them, but you don't matter to them. So in order so that it doesn't kill your sanity, so that it doesn't kill your spirit, you need to ignore them. You understand? Ignore them. When they do something, it didn't bother you. Don't, don't act like it bothered you. You feel me? It, because they will use the very thing that they know about you, the very thing that you love, the very thing that you don't like, it will be used against you. And when it does, after you figure out how they are and who they are, ignore them. Ignore what they did. Because remember, if you fight in fire with fire, how does the fire get put out? You got to fight fire with water. Water puts out the fire. You get what I'm saying? And when two people keep fighting, how does that truly end the fight? If one person stops fighting, right? And then one is fighting them, the one who's fighting them has got to stop because they'll be fighting themselves. So ignore them and let them fight themselves. 
that will give you peace and protect your spirit. Number three is going to be do not respond out of offense. And I know it's, it's basically close. It's basically like the other one, right? Ignoring them. And I'm telling you not to react, right? Don't react. Don't be offended. Don't show offense. Don't respond out of offense. So if it bothered you, right? Do not react. Do not respond out of offense to them. Don't show them that it bothered you, right? Don't be offensive to them. Don't even, even check your body language. You're going to have to master this, right? You're going to have to master not being offended. You get what I'm saying? You got to understand when someone does something, you got to expect it. When we respond out of offense, we're surprised. You get what I'm saying? We're caught off guard. But this is why we got to be strategic. This is why we got to understand these things. This is why we got to understand this person is doing this on purpose. This person don't respect me. This person consistently keeps doing it. So if somebody consistently keeps doing something, then you got to be aware of it, right? So why are you going to keep responding out of offense? Why are you going to keep being offended when they keep doing the same thing? You should expect it rather than not expecting it. That's what wisdom is, right? So you need to be wise. You need to be strategic. You need to not respond out of offense to someone who consistently keeps offending you. You are giving them control over your life, over your spirit, over your peace. Don't let them affect your peace. Do not respond out of offense. Stop being offended. When they do something, just just, just be like, but, but, but you need to master the art of your body language right? It can't be seen in your face. When they doing all of this, it's kind of like a child trying to get your attention. That's how they act. Like a child trying to get your attention, right? So if you know this child, especially if it's not your child, if it's not your child, you should be able to do this, right? If it's your child, it's going to be harder. But if it's not your child and this child is acting now and they're trying to get your attention, if you're not a teacher, ignore that child. It's the same thing you do with this type of person. You ignore the nonsense, let them know that you ain't bothered. You don't care. Let them do the foolishness that they do on their own. You understand what I'm saying? That's number three. Do not respond out of offense. Stop being offended to this person who has this narcissistic mindset who consistently keeps trying to offend you and bother you. All right? Number four is stop explaining yourself to them. Stop explaining what you meant to them, right? If someone... If someone has a narcissistic mindset, right? Or someone is a narcissist and they keep going back and forth with you, right? And you're trying to explain to them because you think that they don't know or they don't understand. I'm here to tell you if they are narcissistic, they don't care. They're actually doing that on purpose to get under your skin. They are saying, I don't know what you're talking about. On purpose. Why? Because if they say, I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? And you're going to consistently keep trying to explain it. You know what they're doing? You explaining it makes them feel good. Makes them feel like they mean something to you. Makes it feel like what happened means something, which makes them feel important, which makes it invalidate them, which, which heightens their self-esteem and which kills your spirit and your peace and drains the mess out of you because they're never going to understand what you are trying to explain and they are doing that on purpose. I'm trying to tell you, it is a strategic thing. It is a tactic that they are using to bother you, to hurt you. It's like they're, they're, they're looking at you, trying to kill yourself to get over this mountain. And they are allowing it on purpose. You get what I'm saying? Like they want you to kill yourself going up this mountain, right? So they're going to keep doing whatever they got to do when they know there's an easier way. When they know there's a better way, right? They want to hurt you because they want you to depend on them. Stop explaining yourself to a narcissist, bro. You hear what I'm saying? Stop explaining yourself. And I know it may seem like it's a bad thing, but it's not a bad thing. You got to remember, even Jesus didn't explain himself to, to Pontius Pilate. They asked him, was he the Messiah? They asked him, was he the Messiah? Was he God's son? Jesus kept his mouth closed because he knew what they were trying to do. He knew that they were trying to get him to say something. They was trying to use 
him. They were going to persecute him based off of anything that he said, anything that he did. He kept his mouth shut and he teaches us the same thing. He teaches us the schemes of the enemy, but he says to love the enemy. So even though you are over here not explaining yourself, right? You're not explaining yourself because you understand what they're trying to do. That don't mean you still don't show love. That don't mean that you get revenge back because trying to get revenge back on a narcissist, you're going to lose. They're like a master manipulator. Like the enemy is a master manipulator. So you trying to get them back is only going to make you look more foolish. Don't ever try to get them back. The only way you could win is for them not to kill your peace and for you to show love and respect when they are evil to you. You understand what I'm saying? Because you being evil back, you trying to get them back, that just validates what they did. They basically wanted you to do that. Do you understand? They want you to try to get them back because it's going to drain you. But if you do the opposite, they're confused and you're doing it out of, out of the goodness of your heart. This is why God says to do that. And they can't get supply from you. They can't use you if you're not reacting bad, if you're not explaining yourself, if you're not doing all these things that they want you to do. You understand? So stop explaining yourself to them. You don't got to explain yourself. They don't want to understand what you're saying anyway. They just want you to keep explaining. They want you to look foolish in their eyes and they want you to be drained and mad and hurt and pleading to them. Come on, man. We got to stop it. All right. Number five is nod your head in acknowledgement. Yeah, I said it. Nod your head. Nod your head like this or in acknowledgement. So if you have to be around a narcissist, right? Remember, I said, stop explaining yourself. I said, don't respond out of offense. I said, pray. I said, do all of these things, right? So I'm now I'm trying to teach you how, what to do when they speak to you. Nod your head. Trust. You understand? Because remember, they're, they're, they're trying to get a reaction. They want you to explain. They want you to, they want to drain you. They want to bother you. They want all of this from you. So when you're like this, when you're like, oh yeah, oh no. You're not giving them what they're trying to pull out of you. So if they're like, so why did you do this? You're like, oh. Or if they're like, you know, when this happened, because you know, they are self-absorbed. So they want a reaction. They want, they want to talk about themselves. They want to see themselves as higher, right? So if they're talking to you or talking to you about something else or saying something to you, all you got to do is them. Or like, even if they try to say something sarcastic to you, you can, you can agree or disagree with a nod head, like, but not a bad reaction. Just be like, man, you don't even got to say much to them. Just nod your head to them. You feel what I'm saying? And this is, and I'm telling you what I learned. Because being around them, I know you cannot say much to them. Because if you do, if you try to explain, if you try to help them, even if it's not towards you, if you try to help them when they're doing something with someone else or they're talking about someone else that you don't like and you're trying to help them as a friend, you can't correct them. You can't correct them. You can't help them. They don't want it from you. So you got to learn to do other things. Right. You can't you can't let them know if they're doing something good or if they're doing something bad because they see that as bad. They see you as going against them. They see you as trying to say something's wrong with them and they feel bad about that because remember, they have to be this perfect person so that they can't take correction. They can't take wisdom and advice. You understand? So you got to learn another thing to do. Keep your mouth shut or just nod your head. All right. So if they speaking to you, just they talking, they talking. Okay, yeah, yeah. Shh. You don't got to do much with them. Show no reaction, all right? So that's number five. Nod your head in acknowledgement when they communicating, okay? Number six is speak less. And I know y'all basically got that from everything that I was saying, right? But I'm about to show you how, right? And I know I just said nod your head, right? And you could be like, yeah, uh-huh. But speak less if you have to speak to that person or if you got to speak to them on the phone. When you're on the phone with that person and they talking, you need to speak less. Do not speak more. Do not speak a lot. Do not communicate much to them because remember, anything you say to them, they will try to use it against you. 
It don't matter what it is because they see you as supply. Get what I'm saying? They see you as an addiction. They see you as something that's going to fulfill how they feel, right? So if you're on the phone, they're going to try something. If they see you on FaceTime and you talking to them and they be like, oh, why you look fat today? Like, you look fat today. Boom, reaction, speak less. And be like, oh, what? You could just be like, oh, for real? No reaction, like, what do you mean? Or what are you talking about? I do? Like, don't do it. Do not do it. You got to understand it's uppercut jabs that they throwing at you. It's little subtle things that they doing to you without trying to seem mean. They are subtle. They are passive aggressive. You understand what I'm saying? So it's going to be hard to see and notice. But if you know how this person is, then you got to expect it. So if you got to speak to them, speak less to them. If you're on the phone and they talking, just be like, oh, for real? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, don't say much to them. If you're around them, nod your head, uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Remember, they will try to use anything against you, either to bother you, to get under your skin, or to take back to others and try to use a smear campaign to create flying monkeys. And if you don't know what those words are, there's something called a narcissist or narcissistic glossary. Please Google narcissistic glossary and look up the terms behind that. You understand what I'm saying? You got to be careful because they will do those things. They will gaslight you when you say something, acting like they don't know what you're talking about. When you ain't, you not tripping, you not bugging. So you got to be strategic. That's what this video is about. But at the same time, because we are Christians, we got to do it in love. We got to do it in respect. We do not get revenge. We do not seek revenge. We do not seek to hurt them. We do not do what they do. We do not want harm on them. We have to be kind, right? When we're doing these things, we got to understand that something is going on inside of them and we need to pray for them, right? Now, again, this is only for those who have to be around them, who have to. If you got these people in your life and you cannot truly exclude them, like you just can't stop talking to them and never see them again, then you need to understand how to be strategic because you also have to have forgiveness in your heart, because we are Christians, you actually have to learn how to love those who treat you wrong. And you got to understand why they act like that. Yes, it's demons, but yes, it comes from their past. Yes, it comes from deep hurt. Yes, they don't understand why they are this way. They are unconscious of this and they are doing these things unconsciously. Now, it may seem like it's a plot. Yes, it's, it's plotful and they're setting stuff up. They're, 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 they're setting it up to hurt you, yes. But they don't know the deep-rooted motivation behind why they act like this. They don't know that it comes from mommy and daddy issues because, again, it's hard for them to see themselves. If you were to tell them it did this and it did that, you telling them something's wrong with them. Now they're going to be after you. They're going to attack you in the worst way. Because they cannot see that because you told them something's wrong with them. So you got to understand that they are blind and they are deaf and they cannot understand. They are in darkness. We are in light. We can see. They can't see. So we got to love because they can't love or because it's hard for them to love. So when we got to be around them, we learn how to be strategic. We learn how to move. We learn how to deal with them. And remember, and we got to ask God to forgive them and to help us through it. All right. I hope these helped y'all. I hope y'all understand how we got to do this as Christians. And I hope y'all write these notes down and practice this. If you got to come around them and watch what happens, I guarantee you will be more at peace. Remember, Jesus got to be the focus in the storm so that he can give us peace in the storm. All right. I love y'all. I'm going to get it, y'all, when I get it, y'all.